Wherever you are, wherever you are, hope you are blessed and doing safe. Ladies and gentlemen, greetings, family. Uh, of course, I'm tuning in. You see me without the glasses off today. But if you're looking for some opportunities, particular advertisement opportunities, then look no further at the link at the bottom to my email address. You can hit me up for advertisement opportunities. We are supporting and promoting your businesses here on this channel. You can also, if you would like to donate and subscribe to our Patreon, a link is at the bottom as well. So you have multiple ways in which you can advertise with the platform by emailing me when we go on through our live stream. You also have access to premium content, those that want to uh, see premium content that you will not find here on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, as I am uh, suspended probably by now. You guys can check out uh, the Patreon at link at the bottom. But advertisement opportunities, definitely email me, gavin.grich1 at gmail.com for rates and for the Patreon. It is the same as the YouTube channel. It is channel gboot2786. All right. I'll holla. Peace. All right, what's up, family? I'm sorry about that. We had a few technical difficulties coming in. Smash up the likes right now. We're on Rumble. We're on YouTube. We're on X, whoever you are, wherever you are. I hope you're blessed and doing safe. We're on Facebook as well. Please smash up the likes, smash up the likes, smash up the likes right now. Hit that like, share, and subscribe button. We are going live. We're talking about it. We're speaking about it. What's going on? Uh, family, welcome, Danielle, Cece. I see y'all in the chat. We're trying to get some more people. Can we do that? Can we just hit that share button? 
Can we hit that like button? Of course, that's going to cause the algorithm to go up. But on Rumble, you got to be on Rumble, and I'm going to put the link in because this is also another channel that I have, and it's to fight for those of you who are wondering the YouTube uh the YouTube shadow ban that I have been dealing with for the past uh, several, well, actually been going on for a while, a couple of years now, uh, that I've had to deal with, that many black content creators have had to deal with. Um, we're live right now. I'm actually going to put a link in the channel. where everybody can go and look at the on rumble where you can actually i'm going to copy and paste the link in the chat for everybody to go now and can see the video on rumble and you can subscribe to the rumble account where we're going in so i've started on rumble now to do the live stream so it'll be better for views so shout out to you uh buzzer can h shout out to you so we're trying to grow the channel one by one, and we've actually gotten there. It's been great. Uh, it's got it requires a lot of obviously hard work and time trying to get this channel up and going. But uh, I'm grateful to be here with you all tonight on this Tuesday. So, of course, uh, being that the channel is still new, we're not monetized. If you would like to donate to the channel by giving something in the Cash App, PayPal, or Zelle, you may go there now and do so. Uh, we're on X right now as we speak. We're going to get into uh, my main topic in a second. Because we're going to be talking about one thing only. I'm just waiting for us to stay smash up the likes, ladies and gentlemen. So well, let's get into it. I'll just go ahead and start it off. We're talking about uh, the LSU versus Iowa game and what's been happening in the last few days. For those of you who have seen the avatar I've showed uh, for the thumbnail for tonight's broadcast, I have different screenshots of different things that have been said negatively and badly about the LSU women's basketball team. And on last night, LSU lost to Iowa by a score of 84 and, uh, 87 to 94, seven-point win because – Iowa, and they've been praising this white girl, Caitlin Clark, and I'm not saying she isn't worth it because she's actually a great offensive player. She put up 40 points against LSU and against Angel Reese, who had a triple-double. Sadly, Angel Reese also fouled out at the end of the fourth quarter, but also she was playing on a bad ankle that she twisted in the second quarter of the game. The game was actually very close if you watched it, early on uh i don't know and a lot of people i can tell danielle let's see i was talking with danielle earlier danielle doesn't even follow sports like talking about it but she knows everything about caitlin clark because that's all they have been talking about like they have talked non-stop on twitter on espn they've been calling her the new i even i'm going to show you this too they've been comparing her to the next steph curry She won in what they were playing, the Elite Eight. And last night, I'm going to tell you, because I follow sports, I follow NBA, the reason they're comparing her to Steph Curry, basically what's going on, a couple of things. The NCAA women's basketball, especially the WNBA, everybody knows nobody watches that. 
the WNBA's ratings for ever since they were able to even get on ESPN, even when they put them in a prime time spot, they don't do well. And that's in large part because everybody's complaining about the fact women are being mistreated. No, you're paid based off your attractability, your attractiveness. That's just the truth. You're, and by that, I mean, they don't have the personalities like a W, like an NBA, for instance. If you go back and look at all of the sports that have been played revolving men, the NBA, NFL, there's a storyline to a lot, which is why a lot of people think some of it is scripted. But they always have, you never notice storylines with these players, like the NBA, Magic, uh, in the 80s, it was Magic versus Larry Bird. The Lakers versus the Celtics. Always a heated rivalry. There's something there with that going back even to the 60s when they had Bill Russell versus Will Chamberlain. Uh, Jerry West. I don't know if Caitlin Clark ever said that. She could have. I've never heard it. If they did, they buried it. But they have been basically trying to push for women by pushing things for these for women's sports to be recognized. And the game actually had uh, the one of the highest, it was actually the highest rated basketball game in women's college history by over 12 million. Now remember Iowa and LSU last year played in the NM in the championship game and LSU whooped that ass. 85 to 103. Now they were complaining because Angel Reese was trash talking. Caitlin Clark, which something Caitlin Clark does all the time. And she even said she was tired. She didn't like how people were coming at uh, Angel Reese. She said she can do that. She won. She can brag. Just like I brag. They, you know, they were doing a John Cena, you can't see me. So I was hoping that LSU was going to pull it out yesterday because I didn't want to have to deal with hearing about Caitlin Clark all day. But unfortunately, it didn't happen because uh, LSU just played sloppy. That's my rundown of it. And in particular, and I'm going to play this video. Van Lilith, Haley Van Lilith, who is Van Lith, who is the uh, she's the white girl that plays on LSU's team. She was on Caitlin Clark. Haley is about five seven, and Caitlin Clark is about six feet. So it was a mismatch. Uh, the coaches didn't put Flo J on Caitlin, which I thought they should have matched up with her, which would have been better. But this is what. So what's going on, this is all they've heard. So these are just clips. Everybody is just on this girl's nuts. Caitlin Clark's got more nuts than. Everybody is hanging on her nuts more than a, than a male prostitute. So Luca called her the female Steph Curry. It's a woman Luca. Steph Curry. <laughs> The woman she Steph Curry. Better than me. <laughs> now, mind you, Caitlin Clark hasn't even won a title yet. And what I'm seeing right now, especially you see this, they were going in on Angel Reese, and I'll get to that in a second. They've been going in on Angel Reese because she was crying and broke down last yesterday. Uh, over the loss, and basically she was complaining about what she had to go through. Her teammates defended her. It's a woman, Steph. Nah, but you know, you see this, the woman, Steph Curry, they were complaining also about the uh, fact that LSU didn't come out for the national anthem. All of that is smokescreen, ladies and gentlemen, for basically going out uh, – at the black players. That's all they mean when they say that because LSU didn't come out and punk ass Jeff Landry, the governor of Louisiana, even commented on it, talking about how uh, they should revoke their scholarships if that ever happened. Any player who doesn't stand for the national anthem in college, they need to have their scholarships revoked. But most recently, you had an article. So let me just go get, well, let me start first. I titled this episode The Great White Hype for a reason. So you saw how they're all on Caitlin Clark everywhere, every day this was going to happen. If you recall back in the 90s, 1997, 1996 actually, there was a movie. That's correct. Yeah, Ice Cube wanted to give her a million, $3 million for the big three. 
Ice Cube is thinking about uh, money. Ice Cube knows what's hot. And to have Caitlin Clark play for him would probably increase the big threes uh, ratings to combat the NBA. That's why he's doing it. Yeah, and Ice Cube, I know there was a black WNBA player who called Ice Cube out for it, why he didn't offer it to other black women. Well, Cube is thinking of ratings. It's business. No, LSU didn't play any defense. That's what I'm saying. Flo J wasn't on Caitlin Clark. She should have been. She would have been a better matchup than Haley Van Lillet. And what you so I called it the Great White Hype. How many of y'all remember a movie back in the 90s called The Great White Hype? In the 90s, Reggie Hutland, who did Boomerang, House Party, and what's another movie he did? He did House Party, Boomerang. Uh, of course, uh, well, the Hutland brothers. He was also involved with BET at one point uh, and the Boondocks at one point. But Reggie Hutland did this film, The Great White Hype. How many of y'all, if you remember that with Samuel L. Jackson, this is the poster for it. All right. And y'all remember, yeah, Samuel L. Jackson played the Sultan. And Damon Wayne's. hold on, let me, uh, let me, I can't hear myself with the fan. Let me turn this off. Excuse me. Hold on. You know what, I'm, let me just relax. I don't want to come on camera for a second. So let me, well, hold your question for me, for Danielle. But if you remember this movie, uh, Damon Wayans played the heavyweight champion, uh, James the Grim Reaper Roper, and Peter Berg, who's a director now, the white boy, he basically became the great white hype. What was happening was in the film, the champ who was undefeated was under the promoter, Reverend Fred Sultan, by, who was played by Sam Jackson. And the fight wasn't getting great numbers. It was less profitable because they were tired of him fighting only black boxers. And they he concocted and realized a scheme basically to get a white boy who hadn't been boxing in years, but who was the only one that scored a victory in the amateurs against Damon Wayne's character to fight him. He concocted a scheme to fight him, uh, to get him uh, into boxing, even though he was uninterested. And he gave him, promised him $10 million to help his quest in eradicating homelessness. So Conklin, that was the name of the fighter, Terry Conklin. And Conklin suddenly was ranked the number eight challenger. And this is uh, when he had even been in the ring. And boxing pundits and officials saw through the scam. And so if you remember in the fight, they said the prospect of a white versus black fight held the prospect of a large payoff, which it did. And they used the white versus black angle. Well, that was partly inspired by Jerry Cooney versus Larry Holmes. Now, that was a real fight. Now, the fight in the movie, it broke records. As well, and with Jerry Cooney and Larry Holmes, you know, Larry Holmes was the heavyweight champion of the world, uh, replacing Muhammad Ali at that time. Great fighter, by the way. And the fight had racial overtones in it. Don King was the promoter. Uh, each of the fighters were promised, if I'm not mistaken, to get 
like 15 or 13 million dollars a piece for this one fight and in the fight there was a lot of racial overtones because jerry cooney was white he had the telephone from the president hooked up to his room Don King and Dennis Rappaport, who was his man and a manager, they began one of the most massive and racially toned campaigns in boxing history to, to raise public interest. And so, you know, there was a lot of racial overtones in the fight. They introduced the challenger. For, they introduced the challenger, which was Jerry Cooney last instead of the champion last, which was against tradition. They had the phone from the president set up in Jerry Cooney's uh, locker room. They were, yeah, they were all threatening Larry Holmes. And Larry Holmes said, you know, Larry Holmes made the famous adage, now, once I get you in the ring, don't you call the police. You can't call the police for help once you're in the ring with me. And that was because they were hyping up. They wanted Jerry Cooney to whip Larry Holmes. Now, Larry Holmes eventually won the fight, but, and Jerry Cooney, he still boxed, but he was never the same after the fight. And oddly enough, he and Holmes became close friends. And so, and yeah, Larry Holmes had white supremacists threatening him and so forth. He had a bunch of stuff. But I love, yeah, Larry Holmes was a great fighter. And so I'm tying it in and going back to 1909 with Jack Johnson was the heavyweight champion of the world. We know Jack Johnson's story. Jack Johnson, when he fought, they always, the white America looked for a great white hope in which to beat Jack Johnson. They looked for a white person that could stop this black brute. And that's actually when riots started, because when Johnson would fight, he would gloat over his opponents. He would smile. He would even taunt them. Hey, hit me. No, here. And so... Yes, race riots were set. They looked for the great white hope. That was after American author Jack London. He called for a great white hope to take the title away from Jack Johnson. It upset the conscience of white America to see this black brute gloating and knocking out his opponents left and right, then sleeping with a white woman. At that, that's Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight champion of the world. And because Jack Johnson would smile and gloat over his opponents, They didn't like that. And Joe Lewis was discouraged. When he was a fighter in the 1940, he was discouraged from smiling and gloating over his opponents. Like Jack Johnson was not allowed in Joe Lewis's camp when he was trying to fight for the title. The creation of the Man Act was based in part because of Joe Jack Johnson having the heavyweight chi title, and the state, and they were trying in the United States trying to strip it from Jack Johnson. So, all of this ties in, in some way or another, with Caitlin Clark, and Angel Reese, and the women at LSU's basketball team, and I'm going into that.
So that's where I got the title, the Great White. That's where the Great White hype comes from. It comes from the Great White Hope. And sorry, I ain't gonna lie. I like laying down. <laughs> Y'all saw me. So you had this reporter. By the name of Ben Bulch. Who released the column. And he painted it as the Sweet 16 matchup. Where he called UCLA, LSU as America's Sweethearts versus its basketball villains. All right, I'm sorry, y'all. Looks like I'm having some... <sighs> this damn computer.
All right. I'm sorry about that, family. I am having the damnedest time uh, with my computer. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Uh, you're right, Lamico. Yeah, white. White America was behind Joe Lewis because at that time, Max Schmeling represented German Nazism. And that was in 1938 when they had that rematch. And it didn't even go, I think, two minutes in the first round. Joe Lewis won by a knockout. What's up, DeAndre Mosley? What's up? So, yeah. So what I was stating was earlier, and I don't know if you heard me, I was just pointing out the racial overtones with the game. And you had a reporter from the L.A. Times, Ben Bolch, who wrote a hit piece article against the LSU Tigers where he wrote an apology. And I'm going to talk about it in a second. But the article basically uh, called it – he basically – the way he titled it was – UCLA LSU is America's sweetheart. Hearts versus basketball villains. Lady Tigers were the villains of the uh, game. Now, in sports, they always try to do a villain versus, uh, you know, a hero versus villain type thing. That doesn't surprise me, but there's always a racial overtone with these things. And they edited this article. But in the article, he referred to the LSU Tigers as dirty debutantes. Now, they've redacted the article where they've left stuff out. Basically, LA Times made him re made both redacted, but Kim Mulkey, and they've been covering that Kim Mulkey, they've been saying a lot of stuff about her. She dragged him for this article. And he had to issue an apology for it. So I'm going to play video of one of the LSU players, a white girl who said this, but also we're going to play the video. Fair use, by the way. Now, this is WAFB. Right now, the LSU Lady Tigers, of course, fighting their way to the final four, taking on the University of Iowa. So this was this was yesterday. This is courtesy of WAFB, which is in Baton Rouge. So they went off on this and they talked about it. So fair use again, fair use. I got to say it throughout. We're going to put the copyright disclaimer here. So hold on. Teams also taking on different opinions that have stirred some media controversy. We told you earlier that the writer of that article that was uh, issued over the weekend posted on social media an apology. The LA Times also posted one last night. Aaron Rodgers is here now to tell us how the players are reacting to all of this. Aaron. Thanks, guys. Yeah, in the past hour, the writer that wrote this article said that society has to deal with many layers of misogyny, racism, and negativity. And he now sees why those words he, that he chose were wrong. In the article, he called the Lady Tigers, tigers dirty de debutantes. The time has done, since deleted the remarks, but tonight we're hearing from the players. Uh, I wish we hadn't have uh, read that because I think that that can crush your soul a little bit that someone would ever say that about us that doesn't know us. The Lady Tigers not only trying to defend their title, but also their character after the LA Times piece. The article called the UCLA players America's sweethearts, but referred to the LSU players as dirty debutantes. I don't even know what dirty debutantes are, but I know when I googled it, I went... <gasps> And it sparked an uproar all over the internet, different outlets calling it unfair, sexist, and racist. Now, if you Google dirty debutantes, 
Now, I know Kim Mulkey knows what that is. <laughs> Dirty Debutantes, actually, y'all can Google it. You can see exactly what comes up. Just look at the bottom under the more news section of Google, and you can see. So the writer knew what he was doing. I come from a different generation. I get it. But I know sexism when I see it and I read it. That was awful. Tigers advance. Since the article came out, players are speaking out on how it affects not only them, but their teammates. A lot of the people that are making those comments are being racist um, towards my teammates. And, um, you know, I'm in a unique situation where um, I see with myself, you know, I'll talk trash and I'll get a different reaction than if Angel talks trash. The L.A. Times right. has since released an editor's note apologizing, calling it inappropriate and offensive language. But to the Tigers, it may be too little too late. You know, I don't really think we the villains per se because we do a lot for the for women's basketball, for the community and the players that we are. There is still no comment from LSU, but the players have made it clear that each other that they have each other's backs on and off the court. As for that Washington Post article, Coach Mulkey says she refuses to read it. She says if it's important, her lawyers will let her know. Guys. All right. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. A year after two people were charged. So Unfortunately, yeah. So that's what uh, that was Haley Van Lith, who I was going to video I was going to play. And basically, yeah, she confirmed everything that we said. Yes. It's all racism. And the UCLA coach, Corey Close, she retweeted the article before that apology was printed. She retweeted that article. And to. Yes, I do remember that, Cheryl. Good evening. Of course, I can't forget that. I also remember D.L. Hughley defending Don Imus when he said it. I remember that, too. D.L. Hughley was one of the few uh, black people I know that was defending Don Imus. Uh, I remember that was in 2007. I remember when Al Sharpton had Don Imus on his radio program. He wanted Don Imus fired. Uh, yeah, he called the women of Rutgers nappy-headed hoes. And they had a meeting when Imus and Imus got fired, but then he was the thing. Don Imus got a job back on radio. He was on NBC radio. And then Imus, so that's, that's what dirty debutantes means. Yeah, and Imus got another job with CBS radio after that. So Bolch apologized saying he, quote, failed miserably in my choice of words. And he says, quote, it has taken me two days to write this apology because I wanted to be as thoughtful as possible in my response to the situation I have created. These are words I have not been asked to write by anyone at my paper but they need to be expressed so that I can own up to my mistake. Words matter. As a journalist, no one should know this more than me. Yet I have failed miserably in my choice of words. In my column previewing the LSU-UCLA women's basketball game, I tried to be clever in my phrasing about one team's attitude using alliteration while not understanding the deeply offensive connotation or associations. Bullshit. I also use metaphors that were not appropriate. Our society has had to deal with so much layers of misogyny, racism, and negativity that I can now see why the words I used were wrong. It was not my intent to be hurtful, but now I understand that I've terribly missed the mark. I sincerely apologize to the LSU and UCLA basketball teams and to our readers, UCLA, a school I have covered for nearly a decade, champions diversity and is known as a leader in inclusive. Civity. However, I have not upheld that standard in what I wrote, and I will do much better. I am deeply sorry. 
So he said, this isn't a basketball game. It's a reckoning. Picking sides go well beyond school allegiance. Do you prefer America's sweethearts or its deputy or its dirty debutantes? Milk and cookies or Louisiana hot sauce? Don't you think for a second that Boats didn't know what he was talking about? He knew damn well what he was saying. Yeah, you so Iowa is now playing Yukon and this page, uh, that girl, Paige Buchers, who's pretty good. UConn is a pretty good damn basketball team. So they talked about, so they have a speech of her resurfacing when she talked about uh, racial prejudice at the ESPYs. And so that's resurfacing. UConn is playing Iowa, and that's going to be on Friday. Now, they have they want Caitlin Clark so bad to win this championship, but if she don't win the championship game against UConn, you see a team wins, not a player. LSU as a team, Caitlin Clark always gets her points, but LSU as a team, if you go in back and watch the game, they were turning the ball, especially in the third quarter. The game was close up until the third quarter. They were turning the ball over. They were making silly passes. They weren't coordinated. They weren't coordinate. They weren't in coordination with each other. They were throwing the balls uh, out of bounds, missing shots. And so you got fans, these idiots that are fuming because they got even calling for Kim Mulkey to be fired because LSU was not on the court. LSU has never set foot on the court when they've played the national anthem. And there have been other teams who have done it before. And so somebody, they had a video up on Twitter. I'm not going to share it here, but a video on Twitter basically showing uh, the national anthem, the basketball court, and the women not being on there. And they were using that to add more fuel to the virus. Oh, well, I'm glad they got whipped. A win for Iowa. Yes. And so, Jeff Landry, commented, Jeff Landry is the governor of Louisiana. The devil himself. And he went off. They went off. He went off, I should say, on LSU. And he actually stated. So... I want to show you what he said. He state basically stated. In his tweet, I'm going to put this right here. So,
this is the image here. This is the article. So Jeff Landry stated, athletes to lose scholarships for avoiding national anthem after LSU controversy. So what they're talking about is this video. So on the basketball court that LSU's women's team was not on the basketball court. And man, all of this is all this outrage, guys. Don't let it fool you. It's not about the national anthem, it's about black women, them Negroes not knowing their place and choosing to protest. That's the image that they have. But Malky herself has stated, we do this all the time. There's never a requirement for any play team to be on the court during the singing of a national anthem. So he wrote in his post on X, my mother coached women's high school basketball during the height of desegregation. No one has greater respect for the sport and for Coach Mulkey. Coach Mulkey. However, above respect for that game is a deeper respect for those that serve to protect us and unite us under one flag. It's time that all college boards, including Regent, put a policy in place that student athletes be present for the national anthem or risk their athletic scholarship. This is a matter of respect that all collegiate coaches should insist. So Baton Rouge Proud reported that LSU's women's basketball team has never been on the court for the playing of the national anthem. It's not fucking required. Now, this is a, go a governor. Now, Landry has served in the Army. And I want to say this to you, Governor Landry, because as someone who has served under the, you know, has protected the quote unquote freedoms of the American people in that Constitution, the First Amendment is present. And the First Amendment, I want you to look at me when I say this. I'm going to put my face on the screen because I'm a lawyer myself. Unlike you, even though you were attorney general, I actually did practice in court. From what I heard, he hasn't practiced at all as a governor, as an attorney. He wasn't that good from what I've heard. He knew people. But I want to say this because I, under the Constitution, there's something called the First Amendment. And in the First Amendment is something called freedom of speech. Under the First Amendment, there's something called freedom of religion. There's the freedom to practice that religion, which is the establishment, cla establishment clause. The I'm sorry. That's the free exercise clause to practice, as well as the right to prevent Congress from protecting, prevent, let me start over. I'm starting to, when I get in a rant, y'all, I start to scramble all over the place. What I'm saying is there's the establishment cause which give, which prohibits the government from trying to dictate what religion you want to practice and the free exercise clause, which gives you the right to practice whatever religion you want. Also in that first amendment is the freedom of, not just the freedom of speech and freedom of religion, Freedom of the press. Freedom also to assemble. There's symbolic speech that is protected. And a state, the government can't dictate that. You actually want to threaten these children? You actually are threatening children from losing their scholarships for exercising the rights that you so, since you want to gloat about the military service, you are gloat about those who serve, the rights you protected. They got a right to disagree with, even if they did and they weren't. If they want to disagree with you, that's their right. If they want to protest a bombing that happened over in Saudi Arabia, or Iraq, they want to protest the United States occupation of Afghanistan. Guess what? We got the First Amendment right that we can do that. You don't have to like it or not. If you don't like it, tough tits.
It's called freedom of speech. My grandfather said she want to talk about military service and honoring those who serve. Both of my grandfathers served in the military. My respectively in my grand my dad's dad in the navy and my mom's dad in the army. I've showed you all the pictures of their military service. My their brothers as well, respectively, served either in the army or the air force, respectively. And yet, when my grandfather came back, both of them came back after World War II, after fighting Adolf Hitler and the Nazis, or flying supplies in the Pacific to help our boys against Japan. They were not allowed to sit at the counter at Woolworths. They were not allowed to sit in the back, to sit in the front of a streetcar. They weren't allowed in, their own, in movie theaters to sit up front with white audiences. That's what happened with black America and our black veterans who, let's be real honest, they are not treated like white veterans, quite differently. Oh, DeAndre, thank you for your service. I didn't know you served. I know a lot of people that serve, I have friends and colleagues and family members who served in the military respectively in the Navy, uh, the Army, the Marines, the Air Force. I don't know anybody in the Space Force. <laughs> That's new. The Coast Guard. And this Thug Landry, I'm going to say this to you. There was nobody really to combat uh, Jeff Landry for governor, uh, the guy who was running Shaw Wilson was not a great candidate. But the point being, is that Landry, not I'm not shocked, but not surprised. I shouldn't know it. I'm not shocked, nor am I surprised by this. I knew Landry was going to say some shit like this. And as a governor, he should, first of all, shouldn't be commenting on this at all. That you're going to talk, you think that they should threaten the scholarships of girls. That offends you that they weren't out in the uh, on the court. Where is the law that says I got to be on the court during the singing of the national anthem? That's not required. This is not This is not the National Football League. And yeah, Angel Reese spoke out. So, and she was stressed out. And you had people uh, going in on her. If you saw from the thumbnail, I had the screenshots. They had one uh, Twitter user who had this image. Now, I'm going to just show you right quick. But he claimed it wasn't racist. It's been going on. It's been trending. But apparently what they were looking at uh, this guy, some of these trolls, they had this up here. Hold on. So. Someone had this image. He had this image up of Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese as the dog. And he's trying to say, and this guy was saying, well, it's not racism. This has been trending for on everything. They've always had stuff like this. And he put up images. Someone tweeted that these were regular images. 
Now, I don't know. Here's the thing. How recent was this? You say they, uh, it's a regular meme on sports Twitter, meaning dog walk. The well, only question I got to say is, how often was this played? When did this come up? I've never seen it. That's just one. Now, I want y'all, so Chris Broussard, I wonder what he had to say. But Paul Pierce, of all people, y'all haven't heard what Paul Pierce on Undisputed. Y'all, ever since he's been fired, and I even stuck up for Paul Pierce when he got fired from ESPN because he got fired for having strippers at his house and it went live stream, but Paul Pierce said the most coonish shit. Y'all listen to this. Y'all, uh, hold on, copyright use. Y'all listen carefully. There's a reason. Why yeah, it's not, it's, 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 let me, it's, it's beyond that key. I mean, I'm going to just keep it 100 with you. We saw a white girl in Iowa do it mm -hmm. to a bunch of black girls. Mm -hmm. Well, of course. That, that yeah. made it like, oh, <laughs> that gave my respect. That gave my respect. I, I hear you. You're like right. that's like, oh, she didn't do this to to uh, some other little white girls that was over mm -hmm. here and in, yeah. in, in Colorado, wherever. She did it to some <laughs> girls from from LSU, yeah, who we did. thought were some dogs, defending champs, defending yes. champs, mm -hmm. and put them on her knee and spanked them, spanked them. And it's so that and it's, I know, but I didn't expect. It. Okay, Negro, what? Paul Pierce went full. Paul Pierce went full cool mode. <laughs> Damn. Somebody wrote, so Paul Pierce thinks blacks are superior to whites. No, hell no. He ain't thinking that. He think he thinks this white girl was all that. Oh, she spanked him. Caitlin Clark. Yes. Everybody forgets Cheryl Swoops, Lisa Leslie. Paul Pierce, yeah. <laughs> Nigga, there's a reason undisputed. There's a reason undisputed's ratings are in the tank right now. Undisputed has like 50,000 people watching it every morning. Ever since Shannon Sharp left. To go to ESPN. They have not had. They've been in the tank. Skip Bayless is not. Everybody's figured out Skip Bayless. Nobody wants nothing to do with him. But Paul Pierce. Damn. The championship should be one of the highlights of everybody. So then Chris Broussard, now Chris Broussard is from Louisiana. Chris Broussard, I don't know what he usually says, good stuff. So Chris Broussard has to say this. And for her to say she hasn't had peace since then, it's just, it's just terrible. It's heart wrenching. All right. Um, and we know last year there was a controversy and that's to me kind of when it began to start. When they were doing yeah. this is right. Caitlin and people this. jumping all over her mm -hmm. and saying nothing about Caitlin Clark doing yeah. it. That was racism. And I think it was classism, too, because if she was some suburban black girl who was, you know, acted differently, I don't know if it would be as, as people would be on her as much. So I think it's unfortunate she's going through that. There was the article in the L.A. Times yep. that compared the the, uh, LSU, the LSU players, the dirty debutantes. And I don't think the author, the writer meant it in a pornographic way. But people said, right. once you Googled it and Kim Mulkey said it, you Google it, it, it turns to pornography. So I don't think he really meant it that way. I don't think he knew it because that wasn't the thing that came to my mind. I, I just thought, he, OK, that. he's trying to turn a phrase. Mm -hmm. But. That is, she's the reason, not that, you know, because she's kind of the face of that team and he was looking negatively at that team because of what he thinks about her. And for her to have to go through that, like Kim said, it, it is terrible that college kids have to go through this. Now, I will say this, as you become more popular 
And as women's basketball is becoming more and more popular, they will also take get some of the negatives that come with popularity in yeah. terms of, I mean, LeBron James is the greatest example. He is a, an awesome player, obviously, but with his stature has come a whole bunch of criticism and scrutiny that he has to have. It should be different with college kids. And a lot of times it is like when I wrote, I would not criticize college kids or high, the same way high school. Pros. Yeah, the same way pros. They're not getting paid. I know they are now with NIL, but they're not professionals. And so it should be different in that regard. But it's just, you know, it's unfortunate. And a lot of what you're talking about also is social media. So the, okay, not cool. just so that, right. So, yeah, that was some uh, wisdom from Chris Broussard. Also, you know what this reminds me of? They've always done stuff like this. You go back to uh, Georgetown. Georgetown. John Sy, I think the coach was was it John Silas? Because Patrick, you, John Thompson. I'm sorry, John Thompson. The co this is John Thompson. John Thompson was the coach for Georgetown. He was the first African-American head coach to win a collegiate championship in basketball game in a basketball game when he led the Hoyas to the NCAA Division I National Championships in 1984. And he got criticized. I remember back in the day. So what they used to do with him. Now, one of the good things about John Thompson he actually confronted, especially Alonzo Mourning was his was one of his students. He confronted a drug lord. Rafael Edmund the third. And he told him. He confronted him. He was the only one. So Thompson confronted uh, Edmund and told him to cease all contact with his players. And he was the only person to stand up to him without consequence, according to the story. Now, y'all do know, you can see Patrick Ewing. Patrick Ewing played for Georgetown. He played under John Thompson. And I remember when they won, Georgetown had to go through a lot of racial prejudice. He was compared to a Didi Amin. They called him the Aditi Amin of college sports. And John Thompson took offense to that. He didn't like that. So John Thompson had to go through a lot of stuff. If you knew Aditi Amin, you've heard of him before. Aditi Amin Dada was the dictator of Uganda, the last king of Scotland, yeah. And that brother, John Thompson, he actually stood up. He uh, held his guns. He protested. Yeah, against uh, Proposition 42, which would have denied athletic scholarships 
to student athletes who fail to qualify academically under standards of the already in effect Proposition 48. And he felt it would have a disproportionate impact on black athletes. Yeah, so he died in 2020, but yeah, that brother was brother was a great coach. Now, of course, in 85, they played, was it Villanova? And they lost, and that was a big upset. So they didn't repeat. Yeah. But he turned that team around. So that's just the point. So they've always done this stuff in sports. Yeah, John Thompson. I got it right. Yeah, Cheryl Miller. That was uh the great Reggie Miller's sister. Now I talking and grubbing, you probably saw that firsthand. I didn't watch John Thompson. I didn't watch uh I mean, by the time when I was a kid, I remember Patrick Ewing when he was playing for the Knicks. So I don't remember uh, Georgetown or college basketball that much. I'm young enough to remember when Shaq. I remember when Shaq was with the Magic. I didn't see him play for LSU that much. But I remember when Shaq was with the uh, Orlando Magic when he got drafted, and he did that movie Blue Chips. With Nick Nolte. I coach basketball, damn it. <laughs> Coaching Shaquille O'Neal. He's going to be great. He's going to help me fight the Iceman. <laughs> That's when Shaq was into rapping. I just want, I just got to put it on my track. Michael Jackson, I'm going to throw something down for his history album, you dig? It's going to be great. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, Penny Hardaway was in it. Yeah, they had a bunch of college players in that movie. So a bunch of stars in it. Yeah, Al Bundy was in it too, Ed O'Neill. So basically with Blue Chips, uh, Nick Nolte was accused, I think he was, basically of entire Nowadays, of course, athletes can get paid for their image. But for their image and likeness now, those deals. So Angel Reese, and she's got till tomorrow to decide whether she's going to declare – for the league or not, for the WNBA or not. But uh, Angel Reese and Haley uh, Van Lip have to decide that. But uh, I just want to say, uh, Angel, keep your head up, girl. You're doing a good job. You're making money. You're young, you're beautiful, rich. She needs to come back to LSU. That's my opinion. I think her stock is going to climb even further if she stays. Let's say she gets another championship because now – you realize the WNBA, those athletes, the reason they complain so much is because they don't make a lot of money and nobody's throwing endorsement deals so much at their way, except now the college athletes, they're getting endorsement deals. They're getting uh, those image and likeness deals and they can make millions of dollars off of it right now. That's what Angel is doing. I think Caitlin Clark is doing that. A few of the other Lady Tigers, I know Flo J, she has her rap album and stuff like that. But yeah, they are doing that. They can make a lot of money. And actually, it's best to do it now when you get these endorsement deals, because once you get in the college sports, I'm sorry, once you get in the uh, professional league, you may not have that lucrative of an offer at that time because nobody's really watching. Let's just be honest. Nobody's paying attention to the WNBA. Nobody watches the stuff. And the reason nobody watches it is because like I said, nobody wants to watch the studs. <laughs> Dr. Short says this, stud wars. 
Everybody wants to see that. I, there's no personality. Cat on cat. Nobody wants that. And not good looking cat. I, I'm sorry, but that's just real. Nobody wants to watch the stud, a stud war. And Dr. Sean stud wars. <laughs> Brittany Griner, I mean, that looks like a dude. Got a deep, her voice is deeper than mine. What's up, y'all? I just want to thank y'all for getting me out of Russia. Oh, uh, I didn't need to be in Russia. I met Simone Augustus once. Simone Augustus was a great, was a great basketball player. Played for LSU. I and she was, and I took a picture with her and stuff. She's nice, she's a sweetheart. I knew she was, I could tell, yeah, she liked that cat, but <laughs> but I mean, I didn't I knew who she was because LSU at that time, um I was and I was living in Baton Rouge. So LSU had, you know, Simone Augustus, they were in the NC uh double A tournament, the Elite Eight. <laughs> Brittany Griner, best WNBA player of all time. <laughs> Nobody wants cat. <laughs> Stud wolves. That's what it is. It's Stud Wars. If they call it that instead of WNBA, I'd probably be inclined to watch <laughs> a little bit more. I mean, basketball, women's basketball could also be this, possibly. Just <laughs> the... how about this? This would actually, this actually would be great. I think this actually could be great. Buns and the. How about this? The buns and basketball. Oh, I'm not bullying them. I'm not bullying them. <laughs> Sound like Louie. I'm. They gonna get me? I'm not bullying it. I was quoting somebody. He said, "Dr. Stewart said, oh, I'm gonna give you now. More people will watch this. I watch, baby. If you're watching, I'm watching basketball with the fellas. <laughs> that could actually be. Everybody would be watching that." Oh, if they put this in the WNBA, you're going to get shit. They're going to out shit. They'll have more than the State of the Union. <laughs> Candace Parker, uh, there was a girl, Candace, was it Candace Wiggins who quit the WNBA because she alleged she kept getting hit on by women? I'm not bullying anybody. It was Candace Wiggins, yeah. If you remember Candace Wiggins, so can yeah, I remember Candace Wiggins. Now she's not bad looking.
<laughs> That's Candace Liggins. Oh my God. So yeah, she's not a bad looking woman. <laughs> but she quit because she said she kept getting hit on by other women and was being and was being bullied. Because she was straight. <laughs> and she spent eight years doing that. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought that was... Uh, <laughs> yeah i i'm not bullying anybody i'm just pointing it out you know it was just fun it was it's the truth i'm just joking i don't get kicked off i don't rumble may not be as strict as youtube is I'm just saying, so, yeah, but I think if they did the Buns and Basketball League, yeah, they'd have record ratings. They ought to change their name. They ought to merge. WBBL. There you go. The WBBL. <laughs> no, the I, I screw YouTube. So I'm gonna wrap this up, y'all. But I want to talk about that. I spent the whole hour and 20 minutes talking about uh, the Buns and Basketball League. But yeah, YouTube. Oh yeah, I'm not worried about them. I'm shadow banned already. So what do y'all think? So that was my take on this thing with the Caitlin Clark situation, but uh, that I digress, family. You all heard what I have to say. If you like what I said, leave a comment, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Hold on. What do y'all? <laughs> All right. So I got to do a uh, follow up. I got to watch this quiet on the set thing. I, I hate seeing stuff like this. But yeah, DeAndre, are you coming to the comedy show? The last thing I want to talk about tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you can still get your tickets. If you're in the New Orleans area, Saturday night, I'm going to be yours truly. We're putting on another one. We got another production for y'all. Comedy is out here in New Orleans East, and it's going to be a laugh fest beast. You don't want to miss, ladies and gentlemen, the April Fool's comedy show at the verdict. At the verdict, ladies and gentlemen, right in New Orleans East. We got that in three days. I'm trying to, I, I swear, I hate. I'm sorry, y'all. I just hate when I am trying to load and get an event. So I'm going to just do this. I'm copying the link. And I'm actually going to share it right here on Eventbrite at the verdict. Yes, the verdict is a hottest spot in New Orleans East right now off Lake Forest Boulevard, 9301 Lake Forest Boulevard, uh, where Old Roxbury was, if you know what I'm talking about, men. Wink, wink. Across from the post office. See, with black people, we always got to do directions like that. We don't say the exact address. We got to point out, yeah, it's right here where, you know, where 
uh, the Cajun Shack is where they sell them hot wings. Yeah, right down the street across from there. That's where that is, right next to, uh, go right across from the post office. That's right, at the verdict, ladies and gentlemen. And here are some uh, where you can get the tickets. And this is actually, uh, I'm going to share, I've just shared the link where you can get them. And hold on. You can view the event, and we're going to view the event right here. So Charles, Charles is from New Orleans, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, DeAndre, you've been to the event. Come on out, get tickets, man. It's going to be a great night of comedy. Uh, we got Kyron Hargrove, Dory Dimples, B Dub, get paid, and Wayne Ransom. Headlining is none other than nonsense, and that's how he spells his name: N O N C E N T. Uh, dollar sign. He told me it's trademark, so I have to put it like that. But Tickets are on sale for $15. Get your tickets now. That way you don't have to uh, wait until the last minute. Buy them up, ladies and gentlemen. Come on out, ladies' night. Come on out, men. Even if you ain't got a woman, even if you've got a man, come out and just bring yourself. We're going to have a good time. We're rolling with that. Shout out to Malika Honore from The Verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a great night of comedy. So, uh, y'all, we're going to enjoy that. But, yeah, the link is in the chat. Make sure you get your tickets. We They're going by fast, ladies and gentlemen. So at any rate, it's going to be a great night. Uh, it's been great with you all for having me. I'm competing. I feel like Tariq Nasheed because I got that museum. <laughs> I got the verdict where I'm doing the comedy shows at. It's going to be a great night. We're bringing comedy back to the East. So that's why I'm doing it. Uh Y'all be safe and be blessed. Can I get to the yams? Sweet big yams. Show me the way. Because I got bills to pay. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you come out? Come to New Orleans for a trip. Come on out and enjoy yourself from the kids. I need to let girls not girl bring you got friend bring your friends. Y'all take a road trip to you're gonna be safe too. Yeah, Charles, I want you to come on out, Charles. Come on out, everybody. Come on out. We're gonna have a hell of a time. DeAndre, I expect to see you. Now don't come in there dressed like the Pharaoh. Oh, you gotta work this weekend? Ah. Okay. All right. Well, you got to make the next one. Uh, Danielle came out to me. Let me just say this. Danielle came out. That's a ride or die sister. She came out and supported me when I was in Homa. Uh, I did a comedy show there. Uh, she was right there in Thibodeau. Uh, she came out to see me. So shout out to her. Uh, I didn't have too many friends that came, but you were, you were there along with uh, it was me, my dad, and myself. That was it. But that was a packed room out there. Uh, I probably wouldn't be there. I, I might do that room again. I don't know. It It gave me some bad vibes. It looked like the shack where they whipped uh, Kunta Kente's son-in-law in, in Roots. I don't know. I, it just gave me that vibe. Just, yeah. But it was fun. No, I had a good time. They were laughing. The audience was rolling. Uh, we killed that whole shoot. Every All the comedians that came up killed that room. All right. Anyway, y'all, y'all be safe and be blessed. I'm out. I'll holla. Peace.